Hi, folks. Welcome to Hanging Out with Mad Mimi. We are here every Wednesday at 4, sharing all different kinds of things about Mad Mimi and tangential stories that happen to come up. And this week we're really excited because we're going to be talking about how butterflies and science have to do with uh, Mad Mimi emails. Um, it's going to be fun, so stay tuned. Um, as always, I'm Mira, and with me is Becca. Yeah, I have Hi, Becca. Hi. And um, you guys can, and we're joined this week by Mark Dewart from Indianapolis. He's a biology teacher at the Park Tudor School. So hi, Mark. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Becca. Hi, Mira. Hey, I'm glad to be here. This is, uh, this is really interesting. Um, <laughs> want you guys to hear, you know, how Mad Mimi, you know, helps a busy high school biology teacher uh, get kids involved in interesting science projects. And um, it's really been a, a useful tool that has gotten me help doing these projects that, um, you know, are good for butterflies, good for recycling. But um, they're fun for me to do, but really only fun if I'm teaching somebody, so they get the kids involved. That's really great, and we're super excited to hear about your story and all of these projects and and how Mad Mimi plays a part. And everyone watching, we want to hear from you too. So if you guys have any questions or comments, please share them. Uh, at the top of your screen, you'll see a little grid button. Click there and you get the Q&A button. So you can submit questions to us and we'll see them and get them answered. So get involved and we want to hear from you. Uh, so first of all, Mark, I, I'm hoping you can just sort of give us a background on you and what a day in the life of a Park Tutor teacher is, who you teach, and just a general kind of intro to okay. your classes. Okay. Um, my school uh, is on the north side of Indianapolis. You know, I've, I've got suburban kids, and the kids, I think what defines them is they, they're really from families that, that value education. So um, these kids are also kind of typical kids that they're kind of a range of abilities and motivations. So I think as a teacher, what, what you feel is oh my gosh, there's this amazing opportunity. You've got these young people, and they're curious. Uh, they're kind of interested. Um, and if you can make sense of things in science and biology, they get excited and want to do more. So there's really kind of the, the recipe here for an incredible level of busyness, that the kids get excited, you get excited, um, they want to do better, you want to give them extra help, and you know some cool project that isn't in the curriculum that um, you know they would form big memories over that would last a long time. So mm -hmm. I think my day starts about 6.30 in the morning when I get to school, and, you know, I will teach, um, oh, five six periods between oh, 8 o'clock when the kids get here and 3 o'clock and then do you know another two or three hours after that setting up labs, cleaning up labs and you know go home and grade some papers um, so it's a very very kind of full life but I think the excitement is um, you're a teacher because you love the things that you teach and what you're doing is seeing a room full of kids get excited about those things. Mm -hmm. And you're looking then for tools. How can you do this well? Because as a teacher, you've also got a family, you've got a house, the lawn needs to be mowed. And you're a person too? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, oh my gosh, I've got to ride my bike or the white creek lawn. <laughs> And um, how do you kind of do these things that you just want to do with the kids but keep it sustainable, you know, personal? Yeah. And so when there is a tool comes along that takes something that used to take hours and turns it into 20, 
30 pleasurable minutes rather than hours where there's a lot of tedious work and about five or six gotchas that if you're busy and multitasking, you get tripped up by the gotcha and then it's another hour. Mm -hmm. So what the Mad Mimi newsletters have done for me is taken something that used to be so time consuming, I would do it very infrequently, and given me a tool where I can put out newsletters, kind of coaxing the kids into stepping up, taking some of their free time, because what I'm asking them to do is get involved with some projects that are after school, so yeah. it's completely voluntary. I don't have kind of a grade to dangle over them. <laughs> Right. Heist them, them. <laughs> yeah, It's got to be something they think is cool. And so the Mad Mimi newsletters um, let me find the pictures that are so compelling and raise their curiosity and type in a story around the pictures, put their pictures mm -hmm. working on the project so they feel a part of the story. Mm -hmm and kind of get kids kind of glued to all of this without that feeling that you're just hurting cats and kind of good ideas are always just kind of falling apart because people have this great intention to help out but then they just kind of get busy with something else. Mm -hmm. So I think um, as a teacher, I've always been responsible for kind of getting kids involved in extracurricular activities. Um, but as a oh, a citizen, I've also been involved with my homeowners associations, environmental organizations, and it's the same situation. How do you put out a new flag? in a way that doesn't take a huge amount of time, but it looks so professional, so neat, people read it, and they get connected to the whole reason you wrote the newsletter. And right. I'm, I'm old enough that I remember newsletters early in my career um, just taking hours and hours and hours and trips to the printer, and with the Mad Mimi system, um, there is no kind of incredible amount of labor. It's composing. What do you want to say? And then finding the great pictures, either taking them or using pictures the students have taken or going yeah. on Flickr and finding pictures that I never could have taken. And um, you know, with the right attribution, incorporating those. And I think everybody just has this kind of thrill when they see their little article in print. But oh my gosh, with Mad Mimi, you're not just the reporter you know, seeing your article in print. You're the, the editor. You're the publisher. And you orchestrate something really big and then see all of these kids coming to your, your activity. And they say, Mr. Dewart, that was such a cool picture. Where did you get it? And so it's really... Um, it's a fun thing to do. Yeah. I'm hoping, Mark, you can tell us a little bit about these projects that you do. I mean, because that whole point, it's, it's so um, inspiring to hear that, you know, you've found this thing that can streamline towards the actual purpose, is that the purpose is not writing the newsletter. The newsletter is right, a an, an, uh, means to the end, right, which is to get these students in to these projects, to these extracurricular activities, um, you know, that are outside of school and that you don't have a grade for. Uh, so can you tell us about those projects that you're running at the school? You bet. I mean, the, the two projects, I mean, as a teacher, I'm teaching classes during the day, and then I am an advisor to an environmental club. And so every year, you know, I work with the student leadership and say, you know, what do we want to do? with the environmental club. And almost every year, one of the projects is, well, we want to recycle. So, you know, we... That's good to hear. <laughs> I said, that's good to hear. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, they want to recycle. I mean, they also don't always know how much work it takes. Mm -hmm. Because I think they've been on the end of recycling where they put something in the recycling bin but they haven't been on the end 
where do those recycling bins go and how do they get there and the way our school is set up we really don't have kind of a, a really high level infrastructure for recycling we've got the barrels but if this is going to work the students have to provide the energy of getting the barrels out to the recycling bins where the recycling operators in the city pick up the recyclable material out in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. So we've got stairways, we've got um, barrels that fill up and they're, they're heavy. Yeah. And so what we have to do is kind of come up with a student run system that everybody takes a turn so the Mad Mimi newsletters helped me earlier in the year organize the environmental club. We go on a membership campaign. Will you be a member this year? And what a member means, you will, you know, help about two weeks of the year. You know, you'll be on a team and you'll do the recycling barrels, getting them out of the school buildings and out in the parking lot and emptied and then returned. So the Mad Mimi newsletters help me kind of get everybody excited. I mean, the first goal is if we're leaders of this club, we're going to end up doing all this recycling unless we find somebody to help us. So we try to build our membership up in August and September, and then we use the newsletters. Um, once we've got a cadre of kids, now we've got to train them mm -hmm. because if they forget half the recycling barrels, then we're still doing it ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it's mostly just reminding everybody, you know, here's who's on deck this week, here's some pictures of who did it last week and how thankful we are for the good job they did. And then everybody that is doing it that week sees their chance for a moment of fame in the Environmental Club newsletter. So the newsletters become kind of the glue that holds this um, organization together. And it doesn't take that long. I mean, my, my biggest regret to now is I've had this dream that um, these newsletters will go out because the students will produce them. And Mad Mimi has that beautiful feature where you can have kind of multiple authors collaborating mm -hmm. producing the same newsletters. And that's just kind of the next step that I'm aiming for because I mean, that would look beautiful on a resume that you were working with this technology in high school and having this impact on a community of people. I mean, that would really be so cool. And that's where I'm headed. For. And it's just been a, you know, a bridge too far so far. But I've gotten some of them as far as signed up and watching me do it and they just I haven't been able to delegate that yet but it's coming there's some that are close and they see the, the value of that so that's the about, the, about the the level of involvement these kids have in in the programs you had mentioned earlier that you sort of delegate and let them handle a lot of stuff on their own Would you be able to talk a little bit more about I think there's plans to have them do things later but what are they on sort of um, these days? yes yeah, so Becky you were, you were asking how, how do I delegate how do I delegate? And there was a, a part to it that I just that trailed off and I missed. Oh, sure. I was just um, wondering sort of how um, the students themselves, what, what their involvement is in these programs aside from um, just getting tasks done, but how are they sort of involved in um, you know, making things happen themselves? Yeah, that there's kind of different levels of involvement. So we've got an executive committee. And these are the kids that have been in the environmental club for two or three years and probably started as freshmen or sophomores and by now they're juniors and seniors. So they kind of know a lot about the recycling operation and they've seen environmental club meetings and they know when we've got a membership drive, you know, how to do parts of that. So that's the real high level of involvement and I try to kind of delegate big chunks to those kids and say, you know, here's the problem. If we don't get this solved, you know, we're planting milk weed and we're carrying out recycling barrels. How can we get others involved to help us? And then when they get stuck, they, they need um, a van rented, they need something that only a teacher could solve for them, and I get them past that. Um, but 
kind of use the Mad Mimi newsletters to hold this executive committee together. So they're thinking about how do we kind of get people that are sitting in on the fence, how do we get our student friends that, you know, say they're in the environmental club, but they're really not doing anything, how do we get them actually taking that next step? Because then they're going to become the executive committee that is in a year or two. We get them involved. So trying to get um, some kids really involved on the executive committee, and then there are lots of kids that um, you know sign up and will get trained on how to get the barrels out to the dumpsters in the parking lot um, and returned. And you know that's a lower level of commitment, but we're always you know, kind of trying to mine and cultivate that group to step up to that executive level commitment. Mm -hmm. Totally, baby steps. You, know, you got to start somewhere. <laughs> yeah, but um, this would all just um, hmm. I think I would be guilting kids into doing this by sending them, you know, text, plain text, email reminders, and even with um, oh, instant messaging, something like that. I think they would do it. Um, out of guilt, you know, respect for me. But with the newsletters, you can put the pictures and the story. I mean, here's how many tons we've recycled so far this month. This is how many tons we recycled this month last year. How can we beat that? You can just tell a bigger story that I think the energy then that you're running off, it's not um, kind of guilt or let's do it for Mr. Dewart. It's their kind of challenge and they, they want to do it more. And that's the energy then that um, you know I feel best about. Definitely. I'd love to share this example that you have um, that you gave us. And this, is an, this is an email that you sent out and I love that that, that um, not, not metaphor, but when you said the plain text email, they're doing it then just because they feel they should. Whereas with this tool that you're sending out, you're telling a story around these pictures and you're able to actually inspire them to do it because it's a cool project, because it's something that maybe they want to do. And that's an amazing thing to hear, that just by being able to use this tool and adding these images, that you're able to get these kids, you know, really invested in the project as opposed to just, oh, this is for my resume or this is good to do. You bet. The newsletter is about another project um, dealing with monarch butterfly. And so the environmental club wanted to tackle that this year also because we've we've heard uh, from the butterfly scientists that the monarch butterfly populations have declined 90 percent from their 20-year averages. So there's, there's a billion monarch butterflies that should be here that aren't. That's how um, substantial the decline has been. And so the idea is since every female monarch butterfly they overwinter in Mexico. Every female monarch butterfly that flies out of Mexico and flies north into the United States, those females will lay 300 eggs, but they have to lay their eggs on milkweed plants. So every butterfly has a host plant that the caterpillars will only eat and metamorphose into a butterfly if the mother has laid the egg on the host plant. So the host plant wow. of the monarchs is the milkweed. So the scientists say the way you build the monarch population back up, I mean there's plenty of eggs in a small population of monarchs if the females just find enough milkweed so that every female is laying, you know, lots of eggs because they're finding lots of milkweed rather than just a few eggs, you know, they think that this population could rebound quickly. So the kids, 
the kids got excited about the idea of what we've been doing in December and January is I've got light banks in my classroom and we planted milkweed seeds and we've got 1,200 milkweed plants every place where I can put a bank of shop lights we've got milkweed plants growing and the idea is once we get to spring and the danger of frost outside is gone you know we're going to find empty lots and places on campus where we can poke these milkweed plants in the ground and because they've been growing January, February, and March um, there's going to be bigger milkweed plants with more leaves um, than there would have been if we just put seeds in the ground in nice. May. Really so, nice. the um, yeah. Mad Me newsletter let me put uh, kind of a compelling picture on the newsletter. So, on this one that we're looking at, um, the milkweed plant is just exquisite. And so, I think everybody that's ever done a news, anybody who's ever done a newsletter must be cringing to broke a hundred rules by putting such a monstrous picture at the top. But it's just an exquisite picture of how beautiful the plant is. And we're not even trying to save the plant, we're trying to save the butterfly. But the plant is also extraordinary. So the kids notice these details, and I think they get caught up by the, the beauty also. And so all of this milkweed planting, and oh my gosh, we planted the milkweed in these little containers. And we put three or four seeds in them, and those were pretty good. Seeds. Pretty good. Seeds. We got three or four milkweed plants in every container. So then we spent days just spinning these things to one plant per container. So all that went mm -hmm. on after school. Where you know the kids have had a pretty tough day. Um, January and February, you know, just aren't the peak times in the lives of high school students for, you know, keeping up with your sleep and things like that. <laughs> Those kids really came forward, and the science department, we went out on a look. That during December, we bought all these lights, we bought all these plant growing containers, and mm -hmm. we said, if we build this, the kids will come. And I knew they would come because we could send out the Mad Mimi newsletters that would have pictures that told the beautiful story. And just like the adults are grabbed by this, the kids have been grabbed like this. And I can tell you, I've had more kids in my room planting milkweed um, and thinning it than I've really been able to, to manage. And so it turns into a big kind of milkweed planting. Amazing. And at the, the end, <laughs> I'm kind of pulling out my hair because we've got milkweed and cone flowers mixed together, but it all gets sorted out eventually. But it's, it's turned out so well. And the Mad Meeting newsletters um, just really got me that turnout. I mean, I've done other campaigns, other ideas, and without that text and image combination, and you can do the text and the images. You know, a hundred different ways. Can you do it in the time I've got? About forty-five minutes. Right now, you mentioned um, before when we were talking about this um, that there were some lessons learned that you incorporated from what you did with the recycling project into this monarch butterfly project. Can you can you share some of those sort of ahas or any any changes that you made that you've seen um, a positive result from? Well, I, I think what I've learned from the recycling that has kind of helped the Monarch Project um, evolve faster is we don't see it in the newsletter that, that you have shown, but I've seen that in the recycling that there's lots of pictures of the kids uh -huh. doing the activity and they get the newsletter and their picture is in it. 
um, they feel part of the story, and they're much more bonded and come to the next call out or the, the next effort. And I think that seems pretty obvious to teachers, but I but think, I think what the man newsletter is, is it gives you a system that you know what you should do. You should make uh, kind of a regular communication that goes out to your constituents that shows them getting involved with your ID. And what the Mad Mimi newsletter does, it gives you a tool for a busy teacher. You can do what you know will work rather than dream about it and wish you had more time to do it. Mm -hmm. So um, this is probably you know, the first time in my, I call this community organizing. I mean, you're trying to get a bunch of individuals to kind of cohere as a group. And all through my life, I've been doing that with different technology. And, you know, this is the first time where um, you get this done so quickly and you see the results so quickly. You're almost addicted to doing newsletters. Um, and in the past, you know, you would get a newsletter and take it to the printer, and then it would filter out to your community. And you eventually get the, the, the feedback. You knew the time that it took, and the delay to the gratification was so low mm -hmm. that um, you kind of just dreaded doing the next newsletter. But these are fun. These are fun to do, and they don't take that much time, and they let you spend your time looking for the great picture and thinking of how do you tell the story that includes the kids rather than just kind of blatting out the facts and getting it done and moving on because that's all the time you have to do. Right. I really like that, that, that you mentioned the community organizing in a more general way because I think that's one of the, we were talking yesterday, that's one of the great powers of the internet. I mean, we have the the capacity to do a ton of community organizing that isn't necessarily just students in school. It could be, you know, you mentioned an HOA organization before, but it could be anything really that, you know, you're you, what you're trying to do is communicate out to people and to do and doing it easily without having to make the photocopies and toss out a whole bunch because there's a typo or something like that. That, you know, we have the power to do that now. Um, you know, it's, it's exciting. It, 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 it is it exciting is. because, you know, I, I teach biology and environmental science. And so I think I know a lot of stories. You know, we were talking about the bats in Austin. And um, there are these wonderful birds that live in most urban areas called nighthawks. And... Um, you know, the bat populations and the nighthawk populations, they're like the monarchs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just sadly, the way economies work, um, it's hard to figure out, you know, how to get rich saving the monarchs and saving the nighthawks and saving the bats. But if we kind of all work together as a team, and you can get a bunch of people in government and neighborhoods and schools to cohere, and everybody does a little bit of it, then something that no one person is going to have an incentive to get rich trying to do, something like that gets done. And so I think that a lot of the challenges that I'm aware of as a biology teacher and environmental science teacher, a lot of the challenges, you know, really involve getting people kind of acting as a community, acting as a team, yeah. and not letting those kind of problems just be neglected. And so the Mad Meaning newsletters put in the hands of anybody that wants to be a community organizer, um, you can play that role and be the catalyst that brings a bunch of people together around something that would just be easy to forget about, like nighthawks and bats and monarch butterfly. Mm -hmm. so I, I really. Um, you know, I told you that when you know I first got involved with the internet in the 1990s, I said this is going to be great for community organizing, and the Mad Mimi newsletter is 
the piece of the internet that I just think is just beautiful for for making that community organized. So it doesn't burn as it burns. Yeah. And I love it too that in, in the newsletter you really can get a sense of your direct contribution. You know, if you're out there planting milkweed, you can be you can really see the results of your efforts, you know, and being able to be reminded that what you're doing is actually making a difference, then um, it can really change the way people feel about this kind of stuff, and it can change the way they interact with these kinds of programs in the first place, um, if they really see the, the success that they're having. Yeah, so the, the, the workflow just used to be just unbelievably time-consuming, and now with a point-and-shoot camera, you can get um, kind of pictures of, you know, your friends in the field doing this this work, and get that picture in a Mad Mimi newsletter, and it can be in the hands of your constituents, you know, almost that night, and everybody gets a sense that this project is going forward based on the energy of individuals and suddenly wheels are turning and it's really beautiful to see and it puts a wind in the back of people that, that are trying to organize these efforts but just know that you can stay up all night and worry about and work on it but if you don't get other people involved all you're going to do is burn yourself out so it's all about getting others excited and the newsletters do that they're so visual and easily personable. I'd love to hear from anyone uh, who's tuned in, maybe other ideas that that you guys might have, or other ways that you've used Mad Mimi that's not necessarily business focused. You know, it's not about that get rich or even make money or get customers. That it's about community organizing um, and how we can bring people together. And I love that. You know, highlighting people's involvement is just such a is such a good way to increase that inspiration. You know, oh, I, if it's me, then I get excited because my contribution is being recognized. But if it's not me, then I get excited about maybe I, you know, maybe I could do that too, or that seems like a lot of fun, or you know, whatever, whatever my personal reaction might be. But being able to see myself in that. Yeah, um, I, feel like, I feel like a lot of nonprofits um, or sort of community organizing types of things often try and focus on fundraising, which is great, but uh, but sending out an email sort of highlighting someone's actual involvement and, and a, a real person, you know, going out there and, and actually planting something or building something um, can be a, a whole lot more effective than just sort of throwing some money at it and forgetting about it, you know, so it's it's great the idea of sort of showing how people are involved and, and how they're sort of, you know, making actionable steps towards, towards real change for these kinds of things. Um, it can be really inspiring. Wow, yeah. Wow, yeah. I think that's a real good distinction that you 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 want to involve people um, as donors, but that um, that first hand experience I think um, really cultivates a different relationship between your audience and your project and I think as an educator you know that's what I'm after and that's probably I yeah I just really hadn't you know thought about you know raising money through the newsletters but you know other people would but then I think people that are using newsletters to raise money maybe haven't thought as often about um, you know cultivating that personal first-hand, um, hands-on contact with the work and the project that that's the reason you're raising the money, but uh, you may kind of end up with deepening a relationship with somebody in your audience that um, arguably could lead to a bigger monetary donation and maybe just contributions in ways that you hadn't even thought of because um, they own that problem and they're more connected to it more and more deeply. So with the recycling so and the, the monarchs, it's just all about kind of getting the kids yeah, involved. And um, I think that those other community organizing 
um, efforts, you know, those people recognize the value of that, that first-hand involvement, too, and just how it strengthens the organization. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's great. It's great to have sort of kids getting involved at, at a young age with this kind of thing, you know, and then sort of feeling their own power with this kind of stuff. I feel like it's a, something valuable to learn now in their lives, and they can almost certainly take it, you know, forward with them the whole way. You know, these kinds of memories are, uh, are super important to sort of forming their worldview, you know, so it's really cool that you guys are, are so involved. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think um, the, 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 the projects, projects are... They, they sound extracurricular above and beyond, you know, the science lessons that the kids are working on during the day. But environmental science, um, you know, we teach about soil, different kinds of soil, what makes a productive soil. And that unit just went so well this year because we had to kind of analyze the soil that we were going to plant the milkweed in and how was this going to work for the milkweed? Were we going to have a productive milkweed patch which means lots of leaves for lots of butterflies to lay their eggs on or was this going to be kind of a marginal milkweed patch because we had to do some work on the soil? So um, yeah, that that uh, kind of first-hand experience, every science teacher knows this, um, gets the kids really thinking about what you're teaching, not just writing it down and think about it for five minutes before they take the test. Yeah, so um, it's got big curricular payoffs, too. I think... Oh, right. that, uh, Whoa, sorry, we got some feedback. <laughs> and I, I see a mute button, looks like it's back on. Mine didn't pop on, did it? No, nope, we can nope. still hear you. You're you're nope. good. Um, but uh, we're just about out of time, unfortunately. Uh, but you know, this is excellent to hear about all the things that you're doing um, at your school and how this can, you know, how these these same strategies and workflow can apply in in sort of broader context. So um, this video will always be available on YouTube for anyone who wants to watch it again. And we're always available for questions. So if you watch or you didn't get a chance to submit a question, just send it over. I'm at Mira at madmimi.com. That's M-I-R-A. And Becca is at Becca at madmimi.com. B-E-C-C-A. -C -C <laughs> um, and thank you again, Mark, for joining us. This was, this was excellent. Well, make sure you kind of convey to the entire Mad Mimi staff you know, my appreciation. I couldn't do this without Mad Mimi. And we're overjoyed that we're able to help in that way. Um, you know, we're always about business because that's, you know, where money is. But this is just as, just as important and just as important to us to make sure that um, we're providing these kinds of, this kind of support. So Beautiful. thanks, thanks really for doing it. I'm glad to do it. Um, and everyone join us next week, Wednesday at 4 p.m., Bye.